Hi everyone, this is Robin from Design Hill and your host for the day. I hope you and your family are keeping well and safe. I would like to welcome you for this session with our amazing speaker for today, where we are going to talk about learn how to design a sports uniform by combining sports and geek culture. Today's event is brought to you by Design Hill, world's leading creative marketplace that caters to the creative needs of businesses and individuals alike who can source high quality designs from professional designers and by unique products created by independent artists. So moving ahead, let me introduce our speaker for today. We have with us Andy Hall. Andy Hall at Tortoise Shell Black is a freelance designer based in Milton Keynes. With over 20 years of experience working in range of different areas of design, including print media, website design and illustration, he has worked for both big and small companies from BBC, Penguin Random House, WWE, Sherwood Hockey, and various sports teams locally and internationally. And is currently the creative director at Geeky Jerseys, designing and producing sports jerseys based on popular culture. Welcome, Andy, and thank you so much for taking out time from your busy, busy schedule and joining us today for this event. Can you please say a quick hi to the audience? Hello, everyone. Hope everyone's well. Keep them safe. Great. So before we start the session, here is a big announcement. We are giving, a, giving away certificates to the attendees who will stick till the end of the session. You just can't miss this chance. So stay tuned till the very end. Also, you can take the screenshot of this event, share it on your Instagram story, and don't forget to tag Design Hill DH and TSB Creative and use the hashtag Design Hill Events. One lucky winner will have a chance to win a print shop gift card worth $50. Having said that, let's quickly look at what Design Hill is all about. All right, that was all about Design Hill. And now we are all set to start the session. Guys, if you have anything that you would like to ask Andy, do put it under questions tab, which is just beside the chat section. We also have rolled out a few polls in the poll section. Don't forget to answer them. So Andy, let's begin with the session. Over to you. You can start sharing your screen now. Yeah, cheers everyone, thanks very much. Um, right, um, well, going to show today is I'm going to work through um, some of the work we do for Geeky Jerseys. I'm going to run through one of the licensed jerseys we did, the Shredders one you can see right behind me here. Um, I'm going to run through how I worked through that and created and what we created and how we created it and show you sketches and things like that and then run through the production and any amends as well that we made and the uniform design. So I'm going to share my screen and then to get that to work is it going to work give me a second there we go right so i think you should all be able to see this now um so yeah so also i'm going to run through the shredders jersey we created for nickelodeon um this was we generally geek jerseys licensed jerseys like this one are limited to a run of about i think this was a run of 200 and so they we sell those exclusively on our website can't get them anywhere else um and once they're gone they're gone so the collectability of these becomes more valuable because we do limited runs of them and we never run them again um so we have a fair bit of creative freedom with nickelodeon um we allow to come up with start come up with, well we come up with ideas um, and propose some up, propose, propose some things and um, suggestions and then we get feedback from those generally they're pretty good we don't generally get too many amends but you'll see as we go along 
So quickly about Geek Jerseys, we've been running as a company for eight years, um, produce all kinds of hockey related jerseys, also baseball jerseys and moving to other areas. Um, we do a lot of licensed stuff with Nickelodeon, Hasbro, NBC, which is the He-Man stuff we work on. Um, and also more recently working with um, some film directors creating hockey jerseys for some movies and other licensed products. Um, we have a lot of following on um, face, mainly on Facebook, but also Instagram as well. Um, we have people like Jamie Lee Curtis, as you can see the photo there, wearing one of our jerseys. Um, Nathan Fillion, who from the actor from Serenity and Firefly and many other cool things that he does, um, wears our jerseys as well. Um, our jerseys also been worn on the sets of Game of Thrones. Um, the Game of Thrones jerseys we did worn by staff, um, by cast and crew, which is cool. Um, and also our logos, a lot of the logos that we produce and design also appear in industry standard logo lounge book series. Um, and I think within the last three books, we've had logos appear in there as well. So we get recognition there. So right, so let's move on. So what I'm gonna start doing, talk about first is the inspiration and resource and how we start or how I start in general. Um, the shredded, what we generally do is I collate a lot of stuff as much as we possibly can online um so we can get as many suggestions many ideas as possible and um references as possible to the characters that we're working on so in terms of shredder we there's kind of different iterations of shredder over time where like if you go back to the comic in the 90s which the image down hit the image here is very much and this image here very much from the comic in the 90s so it's like do we go kind of that far or do we go to like the cartoon um oh, well, i think that's actually it. but we go to the cartoon 90s cartoon which is kind of what people remember more of shredder if you're not a comics fan so we kind of go to this reference as well and then also there's a brand guidelines around shredder and things that we can do as well so we have to kind of look at those and adhere to some of those things or maybe even take some of the elements which we'll see later on take some of the brand guidelines elements and use those within the designs here and there because um <clears throat> obviously when working with licensed product stuff being on brand for them is the key thing so there's things we have to kind of do to stick to that but we do have lots of different types of references here and there um this is just a few of the references I gathered on Shredder. Um, we did get down to a point where we had to stop kind of gathering images from the internet and things because they become out of brand and it's hard to kind of track those references down. So we had one where um, Nickelodeon wanted to be, wanted to know like where the references came from. Um, and so with that's when we kind of like, well, actually we've got these references in the cartoon, which is, which is licensed, which is official, but then we had to kind of go back to these brand brand references and um, style guides to make sure that we then follow suit and follow the style and the on model branding elements that we need to follow. So from there, take the inspiration and then start doing some sketches. These are just a few of the rough sketches um, um, that are narrowed down. So generally, I tend to either sketch on paper. Uh, just in the sketchbook that I carry around me, just uh, get things down, draw several ideas, try different poses. Um, and then what I tend to do after that is I generally then take them sketches onto the iPad and start to work them up on the iPad before I even get to vector them. So bonus work on the iPad now, it cuts down time, especially in Procreate, it cuts down my time producing like um, viable pieces of artwork that look like actual final products final pieces of artwork so a lot of these sketches literally just different types of poses more type of dynamic action poses um like with the, the slashing across or slashing out and trying to break break above the text and things and just stand trying to get used to just drawing shredder i'm drawn shredder since i was about 12 so it's having to try and like get used to drawing him breaking him down into different shapes and how he looks kind of going through a bit of a darker look on some things um and then kind of just again trying different poses and then this pose here which is the one the pose that we kind of fleshed out a bit more and worked on to use on the jersey um so after sketching out the ideas it, it, it kind of take it from the roughs to the vectors so 
this was like a worked up version of the sketch in Procreate where I just tidy things up. There's bits missing here where I was masking things to try and get the hands right. And then this version here is actually a finished version in Procreate, um, all drawn, ready to kind of put into Illustrator and Vector. So just trying different things. As you can see, like from some of the brand elements, we pulled this section across from the brand elements, um, which would work well on a piece of embroidery because the thing to remember while doing this stuff that these patches all being embroidered. So sometimes it's best to kind of leave really finite detail out so we can get a good result in the embroidery. So we kind of worked with these bits here, which work well as part of a base to work on. Um, and then like just drawing out the cities and buildings and then playing around with typography as well. Like we'd look at a lot of different fonts and different styles and try different things. So this font here was one by GRVS called Tronicle, which kind of fit, fitted Shredder in terms of his um, authenticity and origin. And it kind of had that, the right kind of feel for it. So it kind of works. And then this is the final like vector stage of, of the logo. So once I've taken this version here, pulled it into Illustrator and worked that up in vectors, and, and then so ready to apply to a uniform design. But um, things to remember as we're doing these as well, like as as we as I'm going through this, I'm looking at certain like silver elements here. Like we'd actually use silver thread on these elements here. And um, some of the actual shoulder pads would be using silver thread. The type I think has silver thread as well. So we're trying to bring out elements of the character in terms of his like the metal metal shoulder pads and metal fists and metal arms and claws trying to bring that across as well to the jersey so we can utilize um different types of materials to give it a bit more of effect rather than just being all flat kind of gray colors we're using um we're using um, metallic materials from there um and it, it just kind of gives it a bit the jersey a bit better um level of quality when we're using different types of materials and um, we try to kind of sometimes reference um if you look at the vegas golden knights jersey for example that jersey has a lot of gold on it which works really nicely but it's gold thread which kind of makes it stand out more that's why it takes water um and then well we kind of have to also consider uh, so other elements as well like the these background city element and how that would work um, I think in the final one, this one's quite light here. I think in the final one, we kind of just boosted these this purple area as well, but also added in some character there. Um, so yeah, so from there, I take the roughs, create the vectors, then we start looking at secondary logos as well. So the secondary logos would ideally go on shoulder shoulders, shoulder patches. Um, so this is where I kind of referred back to the brand guidelines. And so taking like the original foot clan logo and using that on one shoulder pad, then kind of referencing how they used to shred his head as one of the logos, but putting the, the swipe, the slashes across the back. Um, and then or a bit of the, the demon glyph, that was something that was in their type style guides. And the demon glyph was something that they used on the t-shirts and stuff. Um, but we use that kind of on the back neck um, to, to uh, kind of tie that up with the character. Um, yeah, so it's just like just drawing out new stuff again. And again, these bits here would be silver um, material as well. Oh, um, silver uh, thread. I was looking for the right word from there. So once we've got secondary logos and primary logos, look at, move on to the uniform design. So now moving on to uniforms. And so so this is the, the, um, the, uni the uniform. So what we've done here is I've take, kind of looked at shredder as a character and his, his um and his costume and so we kind of like wanted to bring across like the silver patches here on the, as shoulder pads um and put the secondary logos inside those so this kind of mirror these sections here the arms kind of mirror the the, the um the, the uh, knives on his arms they kind of mirror that um, and kind of generic slash 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 uh, sash across the bottom but then what we did with the back was well, shredder wears a cloak so on the back of that we ran this purple area onto the back to mirror his cloak so the front is gray like his his front of his uniform or the front of his costume and then the back is purple to match his cloak and so we ran that across there um and then as um and then on the typography shredder's first appearance was 1984 so we used 
um we always use generally with licensed jerseys we go from either the character's first appearance date um or when the program first appeared or was first aired so with this it was 84 i think it was the comic it was 1984 he first appeared but we added like the slashes in to match the secondary logo and the slashes into here and these numbers are all trill sewn um stitch numbers so they have layers so this would be one a silver layer silver material and then the, the purple base that would be printed um, embroidered onto there um but everything that's pretty much like in the patches is gray gray color is silver and we carried that across throughout as well so from this we would send this to um we would send this over to um oh something to note on from the original vectors we added in foot, foot clan soldiers in the background on the buildings so it looks like it's got a bit of backup as well um yeah so from this we will take this and we'll send this for approval to to nickelodeon um they would review and then send back any feedback and changes that they would like on this one there was only two amends which i'll show you in a second which was just to um which we had to update just to make the the actual logo more on brand for them because they were just kind of like it's just outside at the moment which i'll explain and show you now um oh i was okay so basically this head is too thin for shredder's face but based on reference we found so the amend oh, oh first off and then we hang on i'll go back a step sorry i'll jump ahead of myself so yeah so we take these uniform designs here we put them onto mock-ups before we send them to nickelodeon or to the licensor so they can see what it would actually look like on the jersey so these are the mock-ups we use and then we go and then go to the men's phase. sorry i completely put this page was here and then we go to the amends phase which is this one here so from the original logo we sent over which is this one um they asked for his head to be made and adjust the head so it's more a model and then for the forearms to be adjusted so we needed to turn if you if we go back to the original logo here that arms kind of turn inwards too much um so we had to adjust that and um, his head his face is too too slim around this area um and so we had to adjust his face to be more a model twist the arm slightly outwards and then adjust this forearm here and increase his bicep depth on this side um and so from that taking their amends working it into our final image which is this one um and then made those adjustments and then sent it back for approval again so then once we sent that back this is how it looks on the jersey um so now we've got the updated shredder face which is more on brand for nickelodeon um it was, it's crazy little changes like just the position of the arm like the the arm in the previous one was kind of turned towards him too much but they like to have it outwards a bit more and um, which is on brand some of their style guide references um and then especially with this side here as well like i had originally drawn the straps quite tight to his arm but they like them to look a little bit looser and a bit more um cr more, a few more creases as such um to make it yeah, to tie them up a bit so to make it look a bit looser and a bit freer and so that's where we're with that once we've sent we've made these amends and sent these men's back then we put them on jersey visual again to see how they will look and then once um once we have the approval from nickelodeon we'll send this off to get a production sample made um i'll come back to that bit so basically I have to then prepare the artwork for us to send to our factory to make the production sample so this is basically the guide of what i do to create our artwork for the factory um but i also send in this bit down here i also send all the logos individually um so they have individual ai files for everything or vector files for everything um so breaking it down what we have to do is you kind of have well way back when i used to have to go for a big pantone sheet on a piece of material and break all the colors down and reference all the numbers of the pantones but we kind of trimmed that process down and made it more efficient so now what we do is i break down all the colors in the jersey so the these all these colors at the bottom are all the colors that are um in well within the jersey every color is there 
and then so the factory knows that they can reference these and then match these up to their pantone references so i kind of go through i know that all the logo all the colors that are on these visuals here those jersey visuals all appear in the logo so i generally kind of put the logo next to the colors or make color squares and then break every color down and um, with this one we try to this with this logo i try to avoid using any cell shade colors underneath the arms and things kind of kept it quite flat um because the more again knowing the pro what this is how this is being embroidered that we wanted to kind of limit the colors on this one a bit more obviously there's still a few colors there but we didn't want to add extra cell shading colors in because it adds another another material another thread and then it adds more time onto the process so we kind of kept this one quite flat and only used it only used like highlights and, and shadows on the silver areas or on his mask um i generally would send one one file with all the colors in and one file without the colors um the factory sometimes um request just to have this one here and then they sort out the colors but they just reference this bottom section and then as you can see at the bottom here this is basically how i set everything up and send it over to the factory now once we get the approvals and everything's fine to go and we get product samples in which i'll show you once the camera's back on i'm not showing the screen <clears throat> and we get product sample back in first and the uh, sample goes to um for example goes to nickelodeon i get to i get a sample um and then my boss also gets a sample and then we just have we kind of have a conversation between that to make see if there's any changes on this one we had to make a bit of an audible um on when it comes to the production because we removed the shoulder patches in the end because these circular shoulder patches on here and i'll go back a step a couple steps these big shoulder patches on here um made and i've got that sample here so i'll show you that soon um because they're actually embroidered patches it made the top of the jersey quite uncomfortable it didn't really make it free to move so we decided in the end to kind of outline um we decided to outline oh sorry eight seconds we're going all the place and we decided to outline the, the the main logos the secondary logos instead rather than have these big patches in so then this line ran around here and um, sometimes this happens like once we see the duck sample we kind of know whether or not it's going to work and at that point it kind of didn't work in our favor and so once we've got that back um and it's all been approved and we're ready to go um we get everything ready to go on the website and get ready to um promote it so then we make graphics custom graphics for um our website and our instagram pages and let them know that it's all licensed by Nickelodeon, fully fully collected series stuff, the, the series that we have for the Nickelodeon products, like the, um, some of the SpongeBob ones we do, and a few others. And then we put it out. We put it out on Instagram and Facebook. So generally, as they are our two largest um, social media platforms that we use, and we got a following on. And then the website banner as well, which mirrors the promotional image, which goes on our website. And yeah, so um from there so i'm gonna just stop sharing i'm gonna close this bit down and then get you guys back on and read some of the questions and then i'll go back through any stuff that anyone has any other questions um oh hang on a second i've got lots of stuff going on wait a second oh my god the screen's going crazy there we go right i'll ask um i'll go through We've got an ad coming up, haven't we, Robin? Yes, yes, Andy. So yeah, can cool. we take a short break now? Yeah. And after that, we can resume. Yeah, cool. Great. Guys, I'm sure everyone is enjoying this interesting and insightful session. Stay tuned and we will be right back to hear more from Andy.
all right guys we are back again with our awesome guest andy so let's continue with the session andy do you want to take some questions before you you, you want to resume yeah cool what i'll do is i'll work down for this at the top and work down page so i can show stuff as well as I'm talking so um i think john levy hernandez asked do you use a screen printing process alongside embroidering jerseys um sometimes it depends on the type of jersey like on this one for example like there's nothing that's sublimated on this and um, so even so hard to see on screen but these are all individual sewn pack uh, sections on the jersey and so we try to avoid where possible you, same with the sleeves these are all individual sewn, sewn bits on the sleeves so we try to avoid using sublimation where possible sometimes we do we've done runs in the past we've had blood splatters so we use sublimation printing um, but we try to avoid as much as possible so the jerseys um are kind of made in the same kind of way that nhl jerseys are made where there's all the individual panels sewed together to make the jersey um so they become higher quality and more robust as well if you're actually playing hockey in them and um, so julianne noines i think that's how you say her name uh what's the things you need to consider in designing for a client and standards and likes to follow and um, yeah so when Design, for example, working with um, Nickelodeon on the, on the Ninja Turtle stuff, we've had brand guidelines. Generally, they've been quite good in terms of they're like just that do do some. They like create create something because one of the things we kind of always try to sell with when getting licenses is that you know, we have creative license to do what we want within terms of what what's allowed, but not to adhere too much to just know that they're their brand guidelines and try to not to adhere to them rigidly so with the shredder one for example like i showed in the presentation um we um we had to make some amends on his face and his head because the version i had drawn was kind of outside their model of what the character is and how they kind of perceive him that that version of the character because anyway, there's many iterations so we kind of had to go back and adhere to their guidelines on that but other than those changes, we were kind of given free reign to do what we wish, which is which makes life a lot easier. Um, but then, like for example, some of the stuff we do with Hasbro, we've had to really stick kind of within the realms of their brand guidelines, because um, just because some of the stuff we had done kind of fell outside it, and they wanted to know where they could where we like this is where the references had to be tracked down and it's like don't use internet here's all the guidelines follow these but work within these these kind of these kind of um constraints so i'll still be creative but work within those um so that sometimes it's difficult sometimes it's not um and then there's another question I'm going to mess up names. I apologise. It's always a running joke when we do Instagram live stuff. I do. Oh, sorry. Well, anyway, I'll answer the question. I'm rubbish with names. Um, is there any specifications or speciality on design and jersey compared to other clothing designs? Um, knowing what what the uh, what you, you the materials you're going to be using is quite helpful. Um, where say you're designing t-shirts, you generally know it's going to be a thermo print or it's going to be a screen print, um, and you know generally what you can get away with with those. Um, with embroidery, embroidery is quite good these days. So you come down to quite minute detail. I think generally within a couple of mils you can get down with it. Um, so it's quite good because we because you yeah you kind of have to know the um process you're working with so work with, like doing embroidery stuff we gem, generally know that with embroidery where you've done a logo you might need a base around that logo for the embroidery if you print it onto because you can't just print onto anything it has to have something to attach to and generally the way our patches are made i'll try as an example the way the patches are made they're not embroidered straight onto the jersey they're embroidered onto a patch first so the patch needs this kind of purple base around the edge as an edge and it needs that base first and then embroidered onto that base and it's the same with the trill stitch numbers that they have a base first and then another layer applied across the top so it's just a matter of knowing knowing the materials you're working with because this patch here is then like stitched sewed onto the actual jersey itself so they're separate elements all the time um so i did we did something recently where 
we had to amend uh, the logo kind of works but we had to amend it to put a base behind it so it it, it worked on there sometimes like it sometimes doesn't work but we're changing the process recently and it's going to make it a lot easier um but yeah so again like with these these needed a base to be stitched onto and these are where the things we amended in the end because they're too big and like cardboard on your arms so yeah so just um when it comes to like printing t-shirts and things you have a bit more flexibility because you know a t-shirt's quite flimsy you know you can get away with some stuff so yeah um so the next one is sorry do you want, robin do you want me to click the start the live answer is that yeah, the best thing yeah. To do? I can yeah cool good. yeah cool i'll do that sorry i didn't know um yeah so the next one um which is popped up on the screen so everyone should, can everyone see that robin sorry yes i can see it yeah so oh, yeah, cool. it's, it's right. from uh, Ashleen and he's asking, yeah. how do you work with licensed art? Do you have to get permission to be able to sell the merchandise? Yeah, um, licensing is a uh, tricky business. <laughs> I mean, generally, some of the stuff we have worked with recently, we go to a lot of licensing shows um, and talk to license holders. Um, so with, so yeah, there is a, there's an agreement. Like obviously we can't, we try to avoid just taking anything and creating something that's unlicensed. Um, there are some things we do, we call parody jerseys, which we kind of take a name or something, but kind of skirt around the edge, which doesn't really infringe on a license, but kind of references that property. Uh, and a lot of places do that. Um, but when it comes to actual licensed products, it's, be it's, it's kind of a, it's a big, it's, it's not a difficult process. It's a matter of sitting down and working out numbers. Um, working out what their return is going to be, what your return is going to be, what we're going to do for them, how we're going to um, manufacture the products as well. So when it comes to manufacturing processes, like they have to know that our factory is audited to stand up to st um, to hold up to um, standards and code. So there's no nefarious things going on with slave labour and anything like that. We 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 audit our factory every year, so we know that we're doing all the right things. So they want to know that that that's being done properly. Um, then they need to know numbers and terms and how many we're going to produce in a year and what kind of properties we're looking at. So like, so with Nickelodeon, for example, we have like Teenage Mutant Turtles, we look at SpongeBob, I'm trying to think of some others. There are um, a few others that we are looking at. There was another one we're looking at as well. I can't remember for life and what it is, Nickelodeon properties. But um, so we get to kind of like discuss what ones we want to kind of, we, we kind of look at their, their, um, we look at their what what properties they have and think actually that one will work for us this one will work for us this one will be a good seller because of what it is a lot of the retro stuff like ninja turtles um gi joe some of the things we're working on and um, power rangers another thing we're working on um those things hold up well because a lot of the people that buy our buy our jerseys um are into retro cartoons and like the things that remind them of when they were kids. Like I love, I just love Ninja Turtles as a kid. So these things, I get to draw the things I like every day. You know? But um, and so we kind of like go through and think these will work. Like there's no way ever I thought a SpongeBob jersey would work, and working with SpongeBob, but it does work. And we've made a few. And we've got some more coming as well. So it kind of works quite well. But licensing is is a, it's um it's a, an interesting beast. And you have, there's been a lot of learning over that time as well, and talking to license licensors and people that hold licenses, trying to get new licenses, um, and learning about that side of the business as well because it's quite, it's quite difficult. I hope that answers the question. Wonderful, and I hope uh, actually this answers your question. Uh, we have another question from Nidhi. Uh, she's asking, what is the scope for this area, sports uniform designing in the design industry? And um, yeah, we've um, there's quite a large scope. Like we we mainly predominantly work on like ice hockey jerseys, um, because the company's more Canadian based, and baseball jerseys as well. We kind of hockey jerseys are great for winter because they're warm, <laughs> they're very warm jerseys, and then baseball jerseys we kind of try and make more for the summer because of some months. But then we have we have kind of um, looked into um, doing more. I will say football. Other people will call it soccer. We'll, leave it there so um so like we've looked at football jet football shirts um as another route but the it becomes down to this is where the logo the design part of it comes interesting because 
like an ice hockey jersey, a general logo would be like, as I've shown, it'll be character logo, uh, the name of the team. Um, but whereas if you look at football shirts, they're more kind of heraldic logos. So it's quite difficult to, it's not difficult, but you kind of have to think in a different scope because you're not looking at creating just a, like um, say, for example, creating a shredder in a logo. You have to kind of be maybe a bit more quaint and a bit clever with it rather than just be like a oh, big brash logo across the chest. It's a small little patch that's going to sit up here as a football shirt. And so you kind of have to look at a different, it's a change of scope from like hockey uniform design and maybe base, like baseball design is another interesting one because it becomes more typographical because a lot of baseball jerseys don't have like big patch like that across the front. So it's then how we try to work in being clever with the typography and adding elements of like, geek culture design in that um but they adds adds quite it's quite fun we're working on a miskatonic university which is a hp lovecraft reference stuff and um, and so the typography that works and then we're trying to add like cthulhu so the typography will work across there we have to think about the break in the baseball jersey as well where there's the buttons and the um, buttons are but like, what we're trying to do with that one is at the moment is add like tentacles in as well so we're trying to be clever more clever with the typography rather than going down a full out graphical character type route that was we've done previously with this kind of university stuff but um i've kind of missed a bit of question but yeah for, so design uniform designs like interesting but i, I do a lot of as i mentioned earlier, i do illustration work for bbc and do a lot of other types of stuff so it's interesting i find the jersey work an interesting break from doing quite tight illustration work because it's a bit bit more free for me to try things, as in where usually, say, if I'm working on an audio book cover, I have to be quite tight. I have the constraints I have are based on the, the story and the book itself um, and what's being portrayed. So it's kind of great. But they kind of also work together at times because I'm learning stuff here that I carry over into this section. And then and it's kind of worked as well where I've done some of the sports logo stuff I've done I've tried in different illustration styles around that and then transferred them across as well. So all skills transferable um, within, it just depends. I suppose you have to look at uh, the, yeah, I would say like skill, like working on sports logo stuff and sports and stuff and then working on other things, you can tran you, you can diversify those and mix them together to create new things. It's because you're learning skills on both sides. You learn different things that you can apply elsewhere. I hope that answers it. I've offered a bit. Great, great, wonderful. Thank you so much, Andy, for answering this question. All right, no worries. Yeah. Oh, this one's a good question. Oh, so, so Catherine Doe's asked about how the color of uh, color psychology comes into play in the design of professional sports uniform. That's a that's a good question. <laughs> good answer. Um, yes, it is a very good question. In general, um, if you look at just sports in general. Like I'm a New Jersey Devils fan. They're generally black and red. It used to be green and red um, back in the day. Um, it's interesting, especially from the stuff, the things that we, the stuff that we're working on. Um, we get to play, get to play with the color schemes of the characters and the license. So again, like SpongeBob jersey, the Patrick Star one we did, that was mainly pinks and purples which you wouldn't really work think would work on a hockey jersey but it just seemed to work so we kind of we're playing into the hands of the consumers knowledge of these characters so we're trying to take them color schemes and use those color schemes in a way to be like this reference this relates to what you know about this character so like with shredder it's purples and silvers and grays so we're trying to take that and work that in so from a selling point of view so psychological wise psychology wise for selling a product we're pulling at pulling at the so lack of better word, heartstrings of the consumer to say this is something that we know these color schemes work work with this character and this references your nostalgia and so this all ties into one thing and ties up and um, and then we get we could generate sales as in whereas i think it's a really good question it's have gone for hours um if you look at uh, color psychology in sports in general, for example, um, Newcastle. I'm a Newcastle United fan, 
um, and they they are predominantly black and white. And you see a lot of concept stuff where concept shirts where people are trying different things and stripes and but it's always going to be black and white because they're known as the magpies and got like they reference the city's all like referenced in there the, the color scheme that it came out with very simple black white you can't get any simpler than that but it works in such a dynamic that everyone always knows that that's their color scheme that's their that's their team as I mean then if you go say for Chelsea for example like their blues yellows they have a yellow in there they don't really use as much actually but then and even a red in there as well i think but they're, they're, they're predominantly blue so again you, you're working towards people's re it becomes a recognition thing within sports car psychology it's a good question i could be here for hours yeah, this. but yeah i hope that answers it like for us color wise we're just trying to create color schemes on jerseys that pull at the heartstrings of people's nostalgia when it comes to creating these licensed products and the things that they like. Sorry, I waffled a bit there. That was a, that was a very good question. It's <laughs> a tough one. And um, we've got, oh, we've got more. Um, right. Yeah, we have two more questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so Ashlyn, uh, uh, I'll answer this one. Here. Um, yeah, is. <laughs> It's a long and arduous process is the answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> lots of conversations, lots, lots of conversations. Having to try and get hold of the right people is always fun. Um, trying to get the right emails. But I would say if you're looking for this, looking to talk to people, there's brand licensing shows on a regular basis depending where you are. There's always there's one in Europe in the UK in November in November, it's usually in London. Um, it was all online last year, so that was interesting. Um, there's some in the States, there's some Asia based as well. Um, every year, I, I can't remember. It's brand license in Europe. The website is, I think, if I'm rightly. But um, yeah, it's just a matter of getting conversations. But these licensing shows is where people go to talk to people to get the foot in the door to then create, generate other conversations with them. Um, so, and then it's about what you're trying to produce. Um, so and um, yeah and just that's where you just try and go to these kind of shows and generate conversations They're, that's the best and easiest way to do it because you can send out hundreds of emails to an email address you think's going to the right place but you might get one out of like 50 responses if it goes to the right person so it's, it's hard to do it people generally when you go to these shows the people are there to have these conversations but if you try to have these conversations outside of them kind of shows they're too busy to kind of break to have these conversations unless it's something that's really interesting we've probably had two out of multiple attempts to talk to people that have kind of panned on panned out one one of this year panned out we just took a punt and it worked but that's that i mean that's the kind of way you're looking at it. you're just taking a punt hoping you get into the right person and it just fortunately did and that created a conversation um but yeah it, go to the brand licensing shows i would say look go go online type in brand licensing shows i think it's called brand brand one i go to is brand licensing europe which is based in london um but they, they do like i said they run events all over the world and it's the easiest way to get in contact with people to talk about license opportunities um thought it's a good one as well um so oh sorry i'm gonna struggle to say that name so just <laughs> terrible with names but um so about materials and how did you use the right material for the design and um, we have a set um material we've used for years we've updated it a couple of times and we're looking to update it to a newer material recently but um i can't remember the name of the life of me i should do because you know i do it use it all the time but um but yeah so we generally use embroidery to, uh, to, uh tackle tools sti um stitching and stuff for the numbers um, and generally used like laces as well. I, I'm a lace collar person, so I always use laces on mine. Not everyone always uses them. Um, but this is just general hockey shirt material. Um, I can't really remember the name off the top of my head. But it's just perforated sports material. But it's very robust. Like I play ice hockey and I haven't torn a single jersey that I've designed as of yet on a board because it's a robust material. But the material that we use is very much it was the material that Reebok were using for all NHL jerseys, but now Adidas have taken over. They use a different type of material, um, which they claim is Adi Zero material, which has got 
deeper holes it is lighter but um i can't remember the name of that off the top of my head Sorry. um how to make cost oh this was gone um so yes um Abel Reyes, I think I say so now, and um, asked how do you make costing on the design proposals? And um, so I don't you don't really from my point of view, well like obviously I get paid to do the design pro proposal, so it's, it's okay, that's okay. But um we because the way the design proposals work, because like when I showed you a lot of that was created, sent to them, like that's already artwork already made. So when it comes to actually sending stuff to the factories to get made we kind of by the time that the, the items are sold online and selling we kind of make the money back on the time that's taken to make the proposal because i've already done a lot of the hard work within the proposal because i've made the artwork the vectors for the jerseys i made the vectors for the logos and generally what we what we the process we usually use is is that we would make visuals we'll put them up for sale and um, for those so a lot of stuff custom stuff we make is all pre-sale um that all gets manufactured then shipped out and so I generally, once the pre-sales finish, I make the artwork then, and then send that to the factory because that's the next thing in line. As in, um, but I've slimmed that process down now to being like I just make all artwork all in one go and save time. But so the same kind of process we use with the presentations is where I've made visuals, all the artwork's created, and we ship that all off once once um, it's been approved by the licenses. Then we we send that off, and that's it done. And there's nothing else to really do on it after that. So the the cost of the proposal in itself becomes irrelevant because we make that money back in time. I think that's all questions. Yeah, uh, let's see what's going on in the chat. And if yeah, you are yeah. done with all the questions. Yeah, that was all the questions. Um, yes, um, I'm trying to think. So, yeah, if anyone's interested, um, I'm. Yeah, if anyone's ever got any questions, I'm on Instagram, um, which I think uh, Robin, if you share, say that's being shared, my Instagram handle. Yes, guys, you can follow Andy on Instagram. We have shared the link in the chat section, and as well as we have shared the send a call to action button. So yeah, I'll the that. handle of Andy is by the name of TSB Creative. Yeah. So guys, and do so, follow uh, him. Yeah, he's a people. people. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so people following there, if you've got questions, I'm always, well, I'm about to answer questions. Um, I don't answer straight away, I will answer. <laughs> but um, yeah, always available to ask questions. Um, but yeah, and Chen, also, I'll just go I'll just do a call to action because you can check out some of the other works. Um, but yeah, um, if anyone has got any other questions to ask. Um, I guess, Andy, we are good to go now. We have answered all the questions. Thank you so yeah. much for answering all those questions and sharing a great presentation to our awesome audience so guys no this brings us to the end of this wonderful workshop with andy this was indeed a value-packed session although there is a lot more that we could have learned unfortunately we are limited by time here and i hope you guys loved this session because i personally did once again i would like to thank you andy for taking out time to be a part of this event Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm on delay. Yeah, no, thank you very much. It's been good to talk through it all. Um, yeah. It's quite nice to actually break it all down and actually go through it, the process because usually the process is just in my head. <laughs> Great. So, guys, this is not where it ends. We have a lot more events lined up for you guys in the coming days. If you guys are interested and haven't registered yet, we are putting the link of our event section in the chat section where you can find all of our upcoming events and register. And don't forget to check out our old events as well. To watch this session and other such wonderful events, subscribe to our event section on our YouTube channel. You can find the link in the chat section shared by Shambhavi from our team. Also, we have recently launched an uber cool design tool called Design Hill Studio. You can create some cool design assets for your business for free using Design Hill Studio tool. Visit designhill.com slash studio and check more about it. You can also find the link of the same in the chat section shared by Shamvi. And guys, on that note, I would like to say bye to everyone who joined us here today. Take care, guys, and stay safe. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. Bye, Andy. Okay. Bye. Thank you.